In this video, you'll learn how to set up a Postgres database on Amazon RDS and connect to it using an SQL editor. If you want to follow along, you'll need an AWS account, which you can create on the Amazon AWS website. You'll also need an SQL editor, such as PG Admin. I'll use dBeaver in this video, but any IDE that can connect to Postgres will do. Let's get started. The first step is to navigate to the AWS Management Console page and sign in. The URL for this is console.aws.amazon.com, and I'll put a link to this in the description. When you visit that link, you'll see a page like this. Select the root user box and enter the email address you use to create an account. If you don't have an account, you can click the Create a new AWS account button on this page and follow the steps. On the next page, enter your password for the account and click Sign In. You will then see the console home. There's a lot of information on this screen, but to set up a database, we need to find something called RDS, which stands for Relational Database Service. The easiest way to find this is to use the search box at the top. So click in the box and type RDS. After you type it in, you should see an entry here titled RDS with the description of Managed Relational Database Service. This is the one we want, so click on it. The Amazon RDS page will load. The next step is to create a database. To do this, click on Databases on the left panel. This page lists all of your databases on RDS, but we don't have any at the moment. Click on the Create Database button. You'll then see the Create Database screen. There are a lot of options on this screen, and we'll go down the page to see which options we need to change. For the database creation method, select Standard Create. This will let you change some of the options on the page. For engine options, select PostgreSQL. There are other database types here if you're interested, but we're focusing on Postgres in this video, so select that. In the version dropdown, select the version you want to use. For this example, we'll change it to the latest version here, which is 14.4. The versions you see may be different as newer versions will be added in the future. In the template section, select free tier. This is because we just want to get something up and running and want to stick to the free options for now. In the settings section, enter a DB instance identifier. This is unique in your account and is used as part of the connection process from the SQL editor. I'll change the default value to Postgres 1. Next, enter a master password and confirm a password. We'll also use this for connecting later, so don't forget the password you set here. In the Instance Configuration section, we can leave this as db.t3.micro. I believe this list is limited to those on the free plan as many options are greyed out. In the Storage section, leave all of these options as the default value. Next is the connectivity section. The compute resource, network type, virtual private cloud, and DB subnet group can all remain as the default values. For the public access option, change this to yes. This is so you can connect to it from your computer. Leave the VPC security group firewall option and availability zone as default. Expand the additional configuration and ensure the database port is set to 5432. In the database authentication section, leave the default value of password authentication. Leave the monitoring section as their default values. At the bottom, there's a section to describe the estimated monthly costs. It seems like our options will not be charged for the first 12 months, but at the end of this tutorial, I'll show you how to delete the database if you no longer need it. It's also recommended to keep an eye on your account usage if you plan on using this database. So you don't get any surprises about what you get charged. Finally, click on the Create Database button at the bottom. The database list page will be shown and a banner will say that your database is being created. You can see the new database in the list here, which has a status of creating. After a few minutes, it will be created and the status will change to available. Now our Postgres database is created, let's connect to it. In this video, I'll use the free SQL editor dBeaver, but you can use PG Admin or any other editor that can work with Postgres databases. If you want to learn more about dBeaver, check out my dBeaver tutorial video here. Open dBeaver. 
click on the New Connection button. In the window that appears, select PostgreSQL as the database and click Next. We will now need to specify the connection details. What hostname should we use? We can find this on the database page in AWS. Go back to the databases list inside AWS. Click on the database name in the list and you'll see the details page for this database. The value to use for the hostname is labeled endpoint on this screen. It's in the format of your database instance name, then a dot, then your region identifier, then rds.amazonaws.com. Copy this value and paste it into the host field in dbeaver. The port should be 5432, which matches what is on the AWS database screen. The database field can remain as Postgres. The username field can also remain as Postgres. For the password, enter the password that you specified when you created the database on AWS. This is not your AWS account password. It's the password you created for the Postgres database. Check the Save Password Locally box if you want to store the password and not have to enter it each time you connect. Next, click Test Connection to test that it is working. You'll probably get an error, such as Connection Attempt Timed Out. First, it could mean that the database has not yet been created. Check that the status is available in Amazon RDS, then try again. If you still get an error, this can likely be resolved by creating a security group on Amazon RDS. This will allow inbound connections to the database, which is not something that is set up by default. Let's see how to do this. To resolve this issue, we need to go back to our RDS window and modify the security group. In the list of databases, click on the database to open the details. On the connectivity and security tab, we want to open the VPC security groups. Click on the entry that appears here, called Default. This will show the VPC section. We have one security group associated with this database, which we can see here. In the bottom half of the screen, we can see the details of this security group. You can drag the border up to make it take up more of the screen, or click on the far right icon to make it larger. Click on the Inbound Rules tab. On the right of this tab, click on Edit Inbound Rules. We now see the Edit Inbound Rules page. Click on the Delete button to delete the existing rule. I was getting error messages when I tried to modify the existing rule, so I suggest deleting it and creating a new one if you get errors. Then click on Add Rule. In the Type dropdown, we want to select PostgreSQL. The protocol and port range are populated. Next, we want to select the source value of Anywhere IPv4. Then click on Save Rules. After a moment, the rule will be saved, and you'll be taken back to the Security Groups page. We'll see the PostgreSQL rule that we just created at the bottom of the page. Now we can retry our connection. When we return to dBeaver, click on Test Connection again. If all goes well, we should see a connected window to say the connection is successful. Click OK, then click Finish on the connection window. You'll see a new option in your connection list. This new one is called Postgres 2, because I already have one for my local setup. Let's create a schema on this database, which is probably the next thing you'll want to do if you want to use this database. Double click on the connection and the item will expand. Expand databases, then Postgres, then schemas. Right click on schemas and select create new schema. Enter a name for the schema. We'll call ours new DB. Click OK. The new database schema is then created. You can now proceed with creating tables on this schema or on the public schema that came with the database. So that's how you can create a new Postgres database on Amazon RDS. If you no longer need the database, you can delete it. This also might be a good way to prevent any charges on your account in the future. To do this, navigate back to RDS. If you're still on the Security Group section, you can search for RDS in the search box like we did earlier in the video. Then click on Databases on the left. On the left of the database name is a circle. Click on the circle to select the database. Then in the Actions dropdown at the top, select Delete. If you want to create a snapshot, leave the box selected. I don't want to for this demo, so I'll uncheck it. Tick the Acknowledge box that appears. 
I'll also uncheck Retain Automated Backups as I don't want that either. Finally, type Delete Me into the field at the bottom and click Delete. After a few moments, the database will be deleted. So that's how you can set up a new Postgres database on Amazon RDS, connect to it from your SQL editor, and delete it if you no longer need it. If you want to learn more about database design and SQL, visit my website at databasestar.com. If you like this video, consider subscribing to my channel. Thanks for watching.